uh, TBT to uh, happiness. <laughs> Hello, uh, if you were just tuning in, my name is Lindsay Burton. I don't wave like this, by the way. If you were, if we are meeting just for the first time, don't wave like this at all. Welcome, please make yourself comfortable, get yourself a drink, sit in your bean bag or chair thing, whatever. Just make yourself comfortable. This video uh, is where I'm going to talk about uh, my love of musical theater and Broadway. So if you're not into that or jazz hands or anything like that, you might want to click away. I have created something recently called the Broadway Do Not Playlist. <laughs> but let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, while I'm working, uh, I work in an office, I really like to listen to music to get me motivated to keep working and to stay productive. Um, I usually like listening to pop, but mostly I like listening to musical theater or Broadway. The reason why is because uh, there's usually, you know, there's a storyline that you're being led through when you're listening to this music. It's also very catchy and um, it keeps my attention throughout the entire album and it's like I'm listening to a story I'm being entertained while I'm working so it just makes working a little bit easier. And it's also nice because it makes what I'm doing kind of look like it's very super epic and there's a purpose bigger than what I'm actually doing. But recently I've had to create something called the Do Not Playlist at work. If you're familiar with Jenna Marbles, which if you watch YouTube regularly, you should know who that is. If you're in musical theater, uh, you probably won't know who this girl is. She has something very similar. She has a Do Not Playlist, but it's when she's in the car and uh, it's a list of songs that she cannot play or else she gets distracted. So I have something very similar for myself, except it's for something very mundane. It's for when I work in an office. My Do Not Playlist consists of shows uh, that I cannot listen to or else I will start sobbing at my desk and nothing gets done and I'm too sad to continue. So uh, that's why these particular shows are on my list. So for example, I listened to the Tuck of Elastic Cast album for the first time at work this week. I have not read the book, I have not seen the movie. This is the first time I was listening to the cast album and spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, she doesn't drink from the eternal water and she dies. Towards the end of the show, she returns to her family and there's this whole montage ballet thing where she goes through life and experiences it and whatever, that's great. The show ends with a scene at her funeral. You could hear in the in the song of this finale or whatever uh you could like hear somebody say like winifred foster dearly beloved mother grandmother daughter whatever and i heard those words at work and i went she died out loud to no one in particular so but everybody was doing their own thing everybody minds their own business so it's fine but you can imagine my shock when I'm sitting there and this shakes my entire world. My whole perspective has changed. It made me want to like sit and think about some things. This is much like when I saw Fox and the Hound for the first time as an adult and it caught me very off guard because I had seen it as a child, completely forgotten it, and then started to watch it as, as an adult again. And um, I realized it was a kid's film and I'm like, <laughs> what? Here's a list of shows that are on this Do Not Playlist. This is a short comprehensive list. It will get longer and longer as time goes on. The first one is Rent. I love listening to Rent. I love listening to the music because it's very rock and roll-ish and it really helps me like speed up like my typing and stuff. But when it gets towards the very end when people start dying, I can't even like a white suburban female. There's like that message at the end where it's like no day but today and that was very much off key. I'm sorry that's why I'm not on uh well, that's why I don't do musical theater anymore. It's basically that whole thing of like live your dreams live your life now because you might die later like later I mean by like tomorrow which is a message every time I hear that is very deep and it's often too deep for me. It's very deep. The next show on this list is Fun Home. Again I love Fun Home. I love the music and the cast album is so emotionally heart-wrenching because it has most of the show on it because it has like in between the songs it has some dialogue to kind of give the song some context that usually breaks my heart every time it's the kind of show where after I see it I want to hug every person I know and tell them how much I love them so I saw this in New York and I cried. <laughs> I cried like 95% of people who normally see the show. Let's see, it started at like Ring Code of Love up until the very end. If you're not familiar with the show, again, spoiler alert, the dad dies. Actually, no, that's not a spoiler because that's like 
they address that in the very beginning of the show. Whatever. So dad dies, and um, he, and like there's this one moment in the finale where Allison is like, "This is what I have left of you," and it's like the whole show is just her rehashing all these memories with her dad and her family and stuff, and all. It's all these like these like really complicated emotional relationships. From there, like the finale, I'm just. I can't put it into like English words or phrases. I just I have to put it into a noise. So the next show on this list, Hamilton. I love this show. Most like um, most of uh, musical theater people and young people and just like really awesome people in general. <laughs> it's great because you kind of they put the whole show pretty much on there because the whole show is sung through. So it helps a lot. When I listen to this, I also get very amped up because uh, it's just, it really motivates me to like keep working and stuff and stay motivated and stay productive. However, if you see a running theme here where people start dying, I start to get really sad. So that's why that is, that is on this list because I get too distracted, especially when it gets to like the very end where they go, who lives, who dies, or who tells your story. I get very emotional because I'm like, wow, I have to do something meaningful with my life. Like I have to basically also on this list waitress i love the music from it i can listen to most of it at work i just have to remember to turn it off by um she used to be mine all the way through the very end because that will make me weep uncontrollably and then everybody is wondering what's wrong with me and it's just it really just really makes everybody uncomfortable i mean nobody dies but it's just that song because it's just like life and and it makes me feel things and it makes me feel like i can take on the world and do whatever i want to do and start a new life and it, it, yeah that's just where i'm at right now emotionally so that is it for my list for now this list will continue to grow as i listen to more and more shows if you had a broadway do not playlist um, for songs that make you weep uncontrollably, what do you have? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm here every Friday. You can find me on social media down below. And I will see you next time. Bye, friends.